Welcome back to the Made America Store show. This is Mark Andel, founder and host with Rob Whalen. And uh, Rob, we've got an outstanding guest today, uh, not only a, a fine American, but believes in the mission and, and has done his part, like we, we wish and ask everybody to do. So I'd like you to welcome him aboard. Of course, we'd like to welcome Greg Owen aboard with us today, a co-founder, CEO of Cheryl Manufacturing and Liberty Tabletop. Uh, Greg, thanks for coming on today. you got a lot to talk about. Uh, well, thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be on board. Yeah, thank you. And, and Greg, just so the audience knows, uh, you're a manufacturer. Uh, talk about the, uh, you know, Sherelle Manufacturing and your, your, your silverware and uh, what you went through a little bit in the past and what you see today. Well, yeah, we we started this adventure, uh, Matt Roberts and I, back in 2005 when Oneida Limited decided that they needed to shut down their factory uh, here in New York. It was the largest uh, most automated flatware factory in the world, but they couldn't uh, compete with China. And there's a very simple reason for that. And they came to the conclusion that they could buy finished flatware in a box, FOB Long Beach, California, cheaper than they could buy the steel to make it with. Huh. So you can't have a zero cost of manufacturing. So that sort of summed it up for them. They were under financial pressure as well as competitive pressure. And they decided to shutter the factory, which Matt was running at the time. And the reason that they could, and the rest and their competitors could buy the the product so cheaply, is because the Chinese government subsidizes their steel production. That's done in order to give their factories a competitive advantage worldwide over uh, others. Uh, as a result, they've gone from zero percent of the flatware market in the early '80s to 78 percent of the imports into the United States came from China last year. Hmm. So. Um, you know, that's what we've been faced with. Fortunately, we have a very loyal group of uh, Made in America buyers, consumers out there in the marketplace. Um, we've uh, embraced a what we call factory-to-table direct business model. So we cut out all the middleman markup, which can be as high as 85%. And it might cost us more to pay a living wage and create quality flatware here in the United States. But at the end of the day... Um, by living off a little skinnier margins and going direct, we can offer a quality product at a pretty competitive price. Yeah, awesome. A top quality product. And we've sold it for quite a while, Rob. And, uh, you know, if anybody hasn't seen the product, we do have samples of whatnot in the Made in store in Elma. Uh, but hats off to you, Greg, for not only, you know, it wasn't lift service, you're a man of action. And we try to do the same, as I told you before. You know, we're 10 years into made in America and 30 years into our manufacturing facility, general welding and fabricating. So I, I feel what you feel. Our first shirt when we opened the Made in America store was the Made in America store because China's a long drive to work. And uh, we say, you know, that shirt's been a hot shirt since day one, and it's still alive and well today. And uh, it is all for our children's future, what we do. And I thank you, uh, because like we talked, making things in our own country is not only common sense. We always want 50-50 fair trade. But it just makes sense. It's George Washington's belief, Abraham Lincoln's belief. You know, this is a, should be a national agenda. It's not an R or a D thing. That's my belief. And uh, um, we're, we're seeing a lot of increase in the, the movement uh, with this pandemic, and we both agree. We always give hats off to the victims and the healthcare professionals and those fighting the, the fight and lost loved ones. But on the other side, we had the best economy going I've seen in a long, long time. And uh, we're, we're week 11 here, Greg. So, Talk about the movement, but the growth on the Made in America side has been unbelievable on our, our website and our social media. We're on 11 platforms. It's just finally Americans woke up and they see our dependency on China, especially on the pharmaceutical side um, and our defense side, you know, which I've talked about for years. And, uh, you know, me and Rob joke, uh, we told you so. Yeah. <laughs> but now people are listening. So what, what do you have to say about that? What do you see on your side? Well, I'm in. I'm the in the I told you so group as well because uh, I've been harping on this issue for for decades. Uh, we'll have to have Rosemary Gibson, uh, the author of China RX, on the program. She hasn't been already. Um, she was out in the forefront on the uh, prescription drug issue two years ago. Wrote this book, and uh, through the CPA, she's been down in Washington talking to members of DOD. Uh, starting a year ago, lobbying or, or excuse me, testifying before Congress. And then when this whole thing hit um, and we realized that everything from the prescription drugs to the PPE, the whole supply chain was controlled by China, export controls were put on by other countries, including our allies, 
um, because they wanted the protection for themselves, and we were just hanging dry. So, um, you know, a massive effort was made to produce ventilators, to produce masks, to produce all these things, but without the industrial base that we've gradually lost over the last decade or so, uh, it, it was very difficult to mobilize that. Um, I think that was a huge wake-up call to our government. Um, perhaps that will move the needle and push them over the edge and get them to push uh, forward some legislation. Uh, Rosemary and I have been encouraging the DOD to use their buying power in, in the Department of Defense and the VA to uh, put in Buy America uh, laws that, that require that all their medications are made in the United States. And believe it or not, there's a solution. Um, these drugs can be produced right here in America um, as cost-effectively as they can be produced overseas. So glad to see that that's all marching forward. But our yeah. um, our sales are up 240% year-on-year uh, since this whole thing started. We were tracking up about 20% before it, and that's driven by the consumer. Um, when I noticed it, I went on to uh, Google Trends, which is a uh, service that Google provides that lets you know what keyword search terms are being uh, looked at. And it's a 0 to 100 scale. It, you can take it back all the way to 2004 when it was 10% of today. It, it nudged up gradually over the last couple decades to about 20% and then shot through the roof to 100% starting about six weeks ago. So that kind of tells you... Um, in the marketplace, how important the Made in America brand has become as a result of this COVID-19 crisis. Yeah, you know, that's unbelievable. And, uh, you know, I'm with you. We're, I want to thank our listeners and the consumers. Uh, everybody's got to do their part. You know, we were involved with a movie, uh, you know, paper produced with uh, Clyde and Sonda Strickland. Clyde's a big, uh, you know, supporter, partner with us. And, uh, you know, Curtis Ellis with Linda McMahon. Linda McMahon was leading the SBA, but now leading America First. And Linda was down to my stores, and uh, we had some good talks. But I, I think with Curtis now, he's got boycott China because he knows the importance. But like you said, with the pharmaceutical drugs, even my father, 83 Uncensored, uh, old school, if you put Made in China on your pill bottle, people would go, wow. You know, <laughs> um, and I, that's what you mean, you know, with Rosemary Gibson, uh, wake up calls. People just didn't know. I've had a lot of people apologize. I was I should have been pounding my fist on the table, Mark, with you. I didn't know our pills, our pharmaceutical, our drugs were made overseas. I didn't know our, our defense uh, items, rare earth minerals and the guidance of our uh, missiles and things, you know. So it is a big wake up call. I, I, I hope it holds and I hope people see the importance. They need to take time and research what they buy. And you can talk about the CPA a little bit and your efforts, I think, with Jim to get more identification and country of origin laws so people do know. You know, we always say we do the homework for you at the Made in America stores because our triple X certification, you know, we before they come through the doors, a lot of their work's done and they trust us. But talk about your involvement with the CPA and Jim Sober and what you're trying to do for the uh, a lot for the Internet, uh, I think, country of origin. Right. So um, the large multinationals, uh, Amazon included, are, are doing a, an outstanding job for them of playing hide the ball with country of origin, particularly on the Internet. And um, these laws were written before the web even existed. So what Jim and I have been working on for years, primarily Jim, I'll give him the majority of the credit, is uh, trying to pass some sort of law that extends the requirement to put country of origin on packaging in a store two listings on the Internet. So uh, Baldwin and Scott uh, finally came up with a bill and introduced it in the Senate. It has a number, so we can actually start lobbying for it, that would require just that, um, so that consumers going on the Internet uh, promptly will see displayed promptly on the, on the head page um, where that product is made. And of course, it's going to come up with a lot of resistance, um, from Amazon and others, because when it says made in China, that's going to turn people off, and they, they know that. Um, and when it says made in USA, um, people are going to click on that and increasingly buy that. So um, we're very optimistic that this will pass. Um, I, I like to add the tagline to it, Senator, I dare you. I double-dog dare you to vote against giving the American public 
the information they need to make an informed choice on where the stuff they're buying is made. And, uh, boy, when you put it in those terms, it would be really hard to vote against that bill, wouldn't it? Right. Exactly. Exactly. Rob, what do you think, uh, product-wise, I mean? Yeah, we've been carrying the sets for, uh, I want to say, seven, eight-plus years now, Greg. And, you know, we have a great relationship going on. And uh, keep placing orders. We're selling in the store on our website as well, doing very good. Uh, some products, uh, new ones that you can tell us about that I might even want to get in our stores. Well, we, we have uh, we, we have a line of, I believe it's up to 30 different uh, flatware patterns. Most of them are your standard things that sort of appeal to everybody, from the big ones to the small ones, thick ones, thin ones, uh, ones with pattern detail, ones that are more plain. But we also have uh, what we call our affinity patterns, and it all started out with um, – some guys in our shop who wanted us to put skulls on flatware because they thought it was a great idea and people would just love it and look at all the tattoos and look at the Harley riders and look at all this. And we thought it was kind of a crazy idea. It's become one of our best-selling patterns, and it, it just shows you the power of marketing over the web when you can target market on Facebook and Google um, and drive demand for a product based on you know people's likes. So we have... We have the Celtic pattern, which are Celtic symbols. Um, uh, we have uh, the Woodstock pattern, which is sort of a, a peace sign type thing. We have a, the, the Earth pattern, which uh, you know is generally a, uh, just different symbols of the Earth, water, sun, etc. Um, se- several different affinity patterns, and they all do quite well. Excellent. Now you started out, you know, when you first took over. I know, I know as a fledgling business, uh, some uh, bumps in the road. Uh, employee-wise, where did you start out with uh, many years ago, you know, start with 05, I think you said, and where are you at right now? Well, yeah, when we first started out, we were a contract manufacturer for Oneida, uh, so we could only produce for them uh, high volume, low margin. So we had probably 120 employees, um, but we couldn't make any money doing that because we were trying to compete with China at the, uh, at the uh, international level and simply couldn't do it. So th- that agreement finally came to an end. Our, our no-compete handcuff came off, and we created Liberty Tabletop. I think we made it down to six at one point during the Great Recession, but we're back up to 56 now, and uh, Mar- Matt is in the process of hiring five more people for the floor, and I, I need to add at least one more person in customer service to, to handle the volume. Excellent. Yeah, and, and they do a great job in customer service anytime that I call as well. Now, for people that are listening right now, do you offer any type of tours out there, or is there a storefront? Yeah, and, uh, we do have a, a, a sort of a factory store showroom here. Uh, we do tours coordinated through the Oneida Community Mansion House, um, generally once or twice a month, and there's uh, a backlog of people waiting to get on those. Of course, those have been suspended during the during the shutdown period, but we hope to reinitiate those this fall. And it uh, it's been very well attended, and people really really enjoy it. There's a lot of history here. Well, Greg, we're going to have to be winding down, unfortunately, uh, but we're definitely going to get you back on soon. And I want to thank you for your time. Thank you for all you do for America, and especially American manufacturers. And uh, you know, God bless, and uh, let's keep this movement going. I appreciate the opportunity, and look forward to speaking again with you soon. All right, thank you very much. Uh, Greg Owens, and uh, please join us next week. You've been listening to the Made in America show on Buffalo's very own WECK.